Time frame, images of a generation. We grew up in a simpler time. We sang. Hey kids, what time is it? We laughed. Hello, boy. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. We cried. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. He's been shot. Lee Oswald has been shot. We fought. We loved. We were attacked. Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. Our flag was still there. Now these memories come to life on posters that can be yours today. Go to HowdyBoomy.com for your copies today. That's HowdyBoomy.com. HowdyBoomy.com. Welcome to this edition of the Howdy Boomy Show. Uh, as you see in the little blurb before I make my appearance, uh, the website HowdyBoomy.com contains basically time capsules, memories etched in wall art that we can remember for the baby boomer generation, the World War II generation, uh, commemorating 9-11, and all of the TV shows, happenings, people, any events that helped shape the baby boomer generation, growing up boomer from the 1940s till roughly 1970. Uh, things are going well. We're putting together the package as I said before, the first team you will notice when you go to HowdyBoomy.com is a replica of the Howdy Boomy Show logo, as you see behind me, the Great American Peanut Gallery. It asks you to join for $19.68. That's the first thing you'll see on the website. It'll allow you discounts on future products and help fund the expansion of the, of the uh, website, which we're going to execute probably within the next six months. Uh, we've been raising money. We've had venture capital come in, and it's going to take roughly about $30 million nationwide to launch it, but it's going to be the most comprehensive, useful social networking, dating site, financial site for the baby boomer generation, their lifestyle. It will save them a lot of money on a day-to-day -day existence because some are approaching retirement, some are already in retirement, this will help cushion the blow of the income stream stopping. And talking about income streams, I'd like to just mention the big thing now is climate change. And I sort of go back to remembering an old uh, Christmas cartoon called The Year Without a Santa Claus. There was a heat miser, there was a cold miser, and you all found out that you don't mess with Mother Nature. And I took a, a thought about when did all this climate change really hit the fan and uh, the current administration is really, really into it. <clears throat> and one of the first things that President Biden did when he took office was to shut down a Keystone Pipeline and he notified, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the banks to restrict funding to oil companies, that they were going to take a close look at their balance sheets because of that. He told the oil companies, in no uncertain terms, in seven to ten years you're going to be out of business. Yet now he turns around realizing that we need energy. Uh, he, he's asking them to pump for more oil, which I think is absolutely ridiculous as far as the tack that he took. But I noticed that that's when it hit the fan when he became President of the United States. And I thought to myself, why would that be? Why would any of this be? You take a look at climate change and who's worried about it. Uh, it's front and center at the United States. Uh, do you think Russia's worried about it? Do you think China's worried about it? South America, Mexico. Do you think they're going to the extent that we're going to? I don't think they're doing a thing about it. And yet we're pumping billions and billions of dollars overseas to some climate change uh, funds that are basically laughing at us, taking our money and, eating, and using themselves, these funds, for a great life of their own. I just don't understand what they're doing. And I think this all started during the Clinton administration.
because he had a vice president, Al Gore, who, when he lost his bid to become president of the United States, got into investing. Uh, and one of the things he invested was a, is an exchange that he had a lot of other Democrats invest in. And they would be uh, exchanging these things called carbon credits, which are very important to the climate change people because eventually, if you're an industry and you are polluting way past the standards that uh, you are supposed to be polluting according to what the federal government sets up as a guideline, uh, you're going to be fined. And the way you can avoid that is by buying carbon credits and trading carbon credits to give to the government to make up for the pollution that you're doing. Well, just think, who invested to start doing the carbon credit exchange? How about Al Gore? Now, he flies around in a private jet that leaves a carbon footprint probably bigger than you and I will in our entire lifetime when he does a one trip, but that's immaterial. Another one is uh, John Kerry, who uh, does the same thing. Now he's the climate czar running around the world uh, yelling at people that they are polluting too much, that we have to go to all electricity. We, I don't know, maybe we'll all be flying kites pretty soon. But he's another one that invested in the exchanges for carbon credits. So what you have to do is uh, you take a look at uh, the Biden administration. You take a look at Joe Biden, who uh, has never held a job in a private sector in his life, which uh, says a lot because I think the reason Donald Trump was successful in his brief tenure as president before COVID was that he was in the private sector. He knows what it is to sign a paycheck. He knows what it is to employ people. He knows what it is that businesses go through. And business was, was flourishing. The economy was flourishing under his tenure. So Joe Biden really doesn't know how to do that. And yet, if you take a look at Joe Biden, he's a multimillionaire. If you take a look at his... Uh, Biden Family Trust, there's millions and millions of dollars in there. He has a son that's a millionaire who's a drug addict. How did that happen? How does that all possibly happen? Well, Joe Biden is for sale. Always was for sale. Still is for sale. And if you take a look at what the Biden administration and what the Biden Foundation has their investments in, I'll bet you'll be not amazed to see that they're invested heavily in these people who make the batteries for these cars. Anything to do with the agenda that he is pushing, they're going to try to make a buck on. Follow the money. That's what this all is, is all about. Follow the money. And that's where this is all going, and they're laughing at us. Now think about it. Uh, you're paying 340 to 380 a gallon now, where... As I said before, on the election day when it was Trump versus Biden, I was paying $1.86 a gallon here in Buffalo, New York. Um, he's trying to destroy the... Uh, I've never had a president of the United States declare war on an American industry the way this gentleman has. It's just sort of amazing. And uh, the reason he's doing it is you follow the money. That's the only reason he's doing it. And you, you, you can't imagine that an 80-year-old man can be that stupid or change his way so much that he now believes that an electric car, wind power, is going to take care of all of our energy needs for the rest of our lives. We're going to be dependent on fossil fuel for the next 100 years. And yet now we're in a period of time where as radical and as far left as you could possibly get seems to be getting you all the favors in Washington, seems to be getting you all the headlines doesn't make any difference if it's ridiculous. It's something that they always now figure it's the way to go and buy an electric car, which is another story. I can't imagine if you had a Tesla and you were in Florida during the hurricane and the government in Florida gave everybody evacuation notice. How far do you think you'd get with that Tesla? I just wonder where you would run out where you would plug it in to recharge it. That is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. I've known a lot of gentlemen, <clears throat> being our age, who's retired, who now transport vehicles between dealerships, auto dealerships. And there are electric vehicles now. And one thing that they have told me without doubt, that whatever 
the speedometer or whatever setting says that that's how many miles you can go. It never happens. Because as soon as you start it, uh, if you run a windshield wiper, if you run a light, if you run a radio, if it is cold out, I can't tell you how many times they have been stranded because the, the figure of miles that you can go that you were notifying it no, does not exist. Uh, they just don't have the ability to get you from point A to point B if point B is a lot further away than you think it is. And it, it, just, it just can't, there's no such thing as a family vacation in a Tesla unless you plan for a long vacation of uh, charging up your vehicle. It's uh, it's not the wave of the future, but they buy the batteries. They've convinced us that this is the way to go. And I guess uh, you can buy one. I'm not. I've got a neighbor that has one. And four times a year is being towed out of here for some reason. So it can't be that great of a deal. They've reduced the price. And the only reason people are buying because they get a tax credit. And if you buy something that you use every day and the only reason you're buying it for a tax credit, it can't be that great of a, a product. I don't care what the product is. It's got to be useful. So climate change, I think, is just a way for some people in power to direct policy into industries on which they invest, and they're going to make a ton of money. And once they're done, they're going to go back to their old ways. Anybody who says climate change, when you start talking to them, ask them, do you own an electric vehicle? See what they say. See how they power their house. See what their bills are as far as energy goes. See what are, what are they doing to wean themselves off of the evils of natural gas. It, it's just amazing to me how we're steered with this, how the press is behind it. It makes you wonder what, if there is such thing as a journalism school anymore. But as they say, you don't mess with Mother Nature. Go to HowdyBoomy.com. Enjoy the website. It's going to be transformed into a must-go-to for baby boomers. Save us a lot of money. It's entertaining. Great gifts for boomers, including now a, a thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle, which is a replica of the poster that's entitled Time Frames Images of a Generation, which you see right here with 250 images of the baby boomer generation, which includes the Texaco man. You know, you can trust your car to the man who wears a star. GTO, Cadillac, Big Finned Chryslers, uh, Big Finned Chrysler Imperials, uh, Packards, all the old cars that we enjoyed, that we enjoyed as children, driving in and parents that we wanted to buy when we became legally able to get a driver's license, which still exists today. The uh, ability of a, a teenager to get very excited about driving a car will never leave us. And now, hopefully, uh, we'll still be using gasoline, which I know we will. But uh, just take a look at the Biden administration, take a look at all these people who have invested heavily in all the industries that they're promoting as opposed to the fossil fuel industry, and you'll get some idea of why they're forcing it so hard. Anyhow, enjoy the howdyboomy.com website. Join the peanut gallery. A lot of, a, lot of, a lot of good things are happening. A lot of discounts are going to be going on. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, going to find out what's going on in the world, what the schools are doing, what the government is doing. God bless you, and God bless America.